Here are the top headlines making news at the University of Limpopo this week. The University of Limpopo hosted International Materials Science Workshop to honor a materials modeling professor. The University of Limpopo has joined the rest of the country in transforming lives through the evidence-based science. Unemployed graduates and students meet potential employers during career fair. Two research chairs organized a two-day training workshop to equip early career researchers. The university hosted a mathematical Olympiad, brought together some of the brightest young minds who competed fiercely to showcase their proficiency in mathematical concepts and applications. Today we cast a spotlight on the University of Limpopo alumnus, who is soaring public relations skies. We will talk to her in the studio. In a radical turn of event, dozens of students from universities across the country are demonstrating on their campuses to protest against NESFAS. And our top story in sport today takes us to the heart of the competitive volleyball action as the University of Limpopo hosted the Capricorn District Third League Games. You are watching Inside UL News. I am Balekani Kekana and thank you for joining us today. Good day. The University of Limpopo celebrated a remarkable milestone today as it honored Professor Putin Webe for his exceptional contributions to the field of material science. This grand tribute coincided with Professor Nwebe's 70th birthday, a momentous occasion that was marked by a high-level material science workshop. Professor Nwebe is currently the director of Materials Modeling Center at the University of Limpopo. The two-day international workshop was themed modeling of minerals, alloys, and energy storage materials, attracting distinguished scholars from leading nations such as the United Kingdom and China. Our reporter, Michelle Kamwendo, brings us the details. We are at Council for Geoscience where the work, the marvelous work of Professor Putinwebe is celebrated. And standing with me here is the Director of School of Physical and Mineral Science, uh, Professor Hassani Chawuke. Good day, Professor. Good day. Are you Good well? Day, Michelle. I'm well and how are you? I'm good. Kindly tell us why are we here? Wow, that's mm -hmm. a very beautiful question, yeah. believe you me. We are here today to celebrate the work of Professor Putinwebe. Mm -hmm who is one of our own, mm -hmm. the longest serving professor, okay. who has done well in research, mm -hmm. in, especially in material science. Mm -hmm. Hence, we themed this uh, conference, you know, a uh, workshop, the mm -hmm. materials, mod materials modeling, yeah. you know, uh, of, of, of materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so why was it seen appropriate to have an event of this kind? Yeah, you know, this is, uh, it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to indicate that, you know, you know, as the university and the faculty, in particular the school, mm -hmm. because of a, our, what we have learned, you know, mm -hmm. throughout our process mm -hmm. in, when we're doing research, mm -hmm. we learned about this tradition mm -hmm. of celebrating scientists who have done well yes. over the years mm -hmm. in their research. Yeah. In particular, you know, we have relationships in the UK mm -hmm. and then in the USA. Mm -hmm. so, so this is kind of international recognition mm -hmm. so it starts at the year of 70 mm -hmm. or at the year of 60 yes, years yes. they start there and then from there it can be after 10 years or after five years depending on where you are in the country mm -hmm. yeah i know when i spoke to professor Mwepe before mm -hmm. his first experience was that uh, in in 1989 he attended one of this kind of uh, you know celebrations okay yeah so it's not just a birthday celebration yeah. but it's a celebration of the in honor Mm -hmm. of the good work that yeah. somebody has done mm -hmm. over the years. Yes, you are indeed giving him his flowers when he can still smell them. Very Lastly, true. I know that you have worked with him. Yeah. Surely there are some outstanding work, uh, some outstanding works that you have witnessed. Can you kindly um, share some of his works that you've witnessed when working with him? Oh, yes, uh, very true. I know working with Professor Mwepe over the years, mm -hmm. you know, we, we worked through three important things yes. 
which are directly linked to our province as well. Okay. So we look at mineral beneficiation, mm -hmm. and then we look at alloy development, okay. and also we look at energy storage materials. Mm, interesting. So, so, so Professor Mwebe has done well in, mm -hmm. those, in those three areas, mm -hmm. and they've contributed a lot in terms mm -hmm. of publications, in terms of you know, output and throughput. You know. mm -hmm. And then you'll see in this conference, mm -hmm. most of the work will be displayed from the Materials Modeling Center, yeah. which covers the three themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I need to also to indicate to you mm -hmm. that, you know, amongst us today here, yeah. we also have uh, people from uh, UK. Okay. One of our own is Sir Professor Richard Cadlow. Okay. You know, he's our honorary professor. Mm -hmm. He has also been honored in the same way. Yeah. Just a month ago, Professor Nora Deliwe, who is also with us today, mm -hmm. she was also celebrated mm -hmm. for, 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 you know, her work. Okay. So the, the main aim for these celebrations is to review the impact of the work that a researcher has done yeah. over the years. So we look at the, what has been done before mm -hmm. and we look at the current status mm -hmm. and then also what will be the future mm -hmm. of this work. So it is very, very important that yeah. you know, we review this because it serves also as a platform to encourage mm -hmm. you know, the young ones and the upcoming researchers as well. True, very, true. Very true. Yeah. I, I believe it, 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 it was an honor for you to, uh, to walk side by side with the giant in this industry. Thank you so much for your time, Professor. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Maslo Mohalung, described Prof Nwebe as an all-round persona, a world-class scientist, a tenacious researcher, a dynamic pioneer, and a spirited teacher. As someone who went to university with Professor Nwebe, I am here to tell you that you could not have found a better scientist, researcher, and teacher on whom to bestow this order his honor, his integrity, work ethic, and his resentless, I mean, relentless commitment to the betterment of humanity are unmatched. Thank you for shining the spotlight on one of our own. Congratulations and happy birthday to one of Africa's finest. Professor Mwepe has earned several honors including the order of Mapungubwe in silver. The order is aptly named after an ancient African civilization or nation in what is now Limpopo province, whose mere existence proves that Africans have been involved in scientific and industrial endeavors for centuries, contrary to what we have been made to believe over the years. I must say, Professor Mwepe might have worn himself in his many achievements a Nobel Prize, but he is still coming. So let's not write him off. Still, his work as a scientist has earned him several honors, including the Order of Mapungue in silver. The order is aptly named after an ancient African civilization or nation in what is now known as Limpopo province whose mere existence proved that Africans have been involved in scientific and industrial endeavors for centuries, contrary to what we are made to believe. By pursuing his academic career to where he is today, Professor Mwapelen's credence to the worth of Africans and allows our children to believe in themselves without any limitations. <coughs> Professor Mwepe earned his honor for his excellent achievements in natural sciences and for contributing to the development of computer modeling studies at the University of Limpopo. Interestingly, the first recipient of the order is none other than our erstwhile president, former <coughs> president Nelson Mandela. This means that his achievement, like those of our former president, transcend the narrow limits of his day job. Professor Nwepe was humbled by the gesture and reflected on some of his groundbreaking work. Well, I would like to thank everybody yes. for uh, <coughs> the compliments that uh, they've been making uh, over the 
last two days, and I, I really you know, appreciate uh, the, the effort that the organizing committee has put in organizing uh, this meeting, and also for all the people who uh, have uh, come to uh, this meeting, uh, either physically or remotely. Uh, it is indeed, you know, a great honor uh, for me uh, for you to have uh, done this. I really didn't expect this. As I said yesterday, I was just told that uh, well, the third of August is the day, <laughs> and I uh, really take uh, uh, this uh, opportunity to thank you all and also <coughs> everything else that uh, <coughs> that I've worked with uh, have done over the years. The University of Limpopo has joined the rest of the country in transforming lives through the evidence-based science when it hosted the 2023 National Science Week. The event exposed the public to the evidence-based approach of problem solving and decision making, responding to the situations by using available information that has been researched or experienced. Uh, in terms of uh, National Science Week, uh, what, what, what more can you tell us about this event? Uh, as you know, this week we are celebrating the Science Week. So, as the University of Limpopo is one of our important stakeholders, we thought we should join forces and celebrate it with them, where we are making people aware of the health benefits of permanent and its adaptability to adverse conditions in the environment as projected by the climate change. Thank you. So what sort of empowerment would you say you are provide, providing to these young ones? It's better we teach them while they're still young. As they are aware, they should be made aware of the health benefits so that they, 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 they grow well, uh, uh, given the benefits of the pelvis that we are making them aware of, and then we are in a way enhancing their thinking about ability to start thinking of this crop and ascertain on where they can play their role. So in, in these programs that you have annually, do you think already for future basis more children are going to flock towards the agricultural field? Definitely, definitely, because uh, in Science Week we are just making them aware as far as they science is concerned. So we give them the information with their own minds, they, see, they will synthesize it and vary their options and then they be attracted to the science or an agricultural field, for example. I thank you. In other news, the University of Limpopo Center for Student Counseling and Development has successfully hosted a comprehensive career expo aimed at providing students with valuable insight and resources for their professional journeys. The event brought together prominent industry experts, recruiters, and academic advisors to guide students and unemployed graduates through various career paths and opportunities. The Career Expo held over a span of three days, featured a wide range of activities such as workshop, discussions, and interactive sessions to address crucial topics such as job market trends, resume building, interview techniques, and entrepreneurship. Our reporter, Manka Limetema, is at Unkhoputi Tiro Hall with more details. Thank you so much. With me here, I'm now joined by Matimba Chauke, who is from the Center for Student Counseling and Development. Thank you so much, Mr. Chauke. What can you tell us about this event today? Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Martin Baja okay, from CSED Center for Student Counseling and Development, as you have indicated. Uh, the center has a, a career fair which ran for three days. We have invited companies to come and, and, and talk about their program, their graduate employment program, and talk about the bursaries and other opportunities which they are having for students. So the activity went so well because the student came in a larger number and then they managed to interact with the prospective employers and it went so well. I, I saw them, they were extremely happy and the companies are happy because uh, they were engaging and it was more interactive 
than you know, you know when it's in a, in a group setting where they don't have that opportunity to engage with the with the prospective employers. And we are hoping that the student will benefit from this in initiative. And we understand that uh, as graduates, they need this information because it's, it's part of preparation with regard to the corporate world. Thank you so much. The center says the event was a success. Students and graduate met with their future employers and business partners. Thank you so much. We also have Anita Chetty here from SARS, and she will be telling us what exactly are they doing here at the University of Limpopo today. Uh, Ms. Chetty, thank you so much for joining us. Can you firstly start by introducing yourself to our viewers and why, you, and why are you here today? Sure, thank you very much. Hi everyone, I am Anita Chetty. I am with the Emerging Talent Department at the South African Revenue Service. Um, the reason why we're here at the university is for the career fairs that were held um, at the university over the last three days. Um, it's been an awesome event, well coordinated by your career services department. Engagement with the student has been awesome. They've shown a lot of interest in our organization and what we have to offer um, to your students here at the university. Um, basically, we are recruiting for a two-year graduate program that we offer at SARS for a wide variety of qualifications. Um, student engagement has really been awesome on campus. There's been a great turnout over the three days. Um, we've been on campus for all three days and it's really been amazing the amount of interest that the students have shown. We've taken them through our recruitment processes, um, basically everything that we have to offer to students, to graduates that have already completed their qualifications. And overall, it's just been um, a very good experience at this university. So we were pleased to be a part of this event. Thank you so much, Anita. That's all from me for Inside UL News. I am Mangani Matema reporting live from Diro Hall at the University of Limpopo. Moving to other stories, in an effort to support the growth of early career researchers and enhances their career prospect, the University of Limpopo's research chairs in mental health and society, as well as schools, as enabling environments, organized a two-day training workshop. The workshop aimed to equip early career researchers associated with the chairs often postgraduate students with essential skills for engaging effectively with youth as research partners. Renowned international researcher, Dr. Tracy Rogers from the University of West Indies in Jamaica, led the workshop, which also focused on co-designing research projects and implementing collaborative research methods. The two research chairs are led by Prof. Mahlapa Lapana Temani, from the School of Education and Prof. Toleni Sodi from the School of Social Sciences. Participants are part of the data analysis. So when I do power with young people, I bring transcripts. I teach them how to code and we code it together because they are going to see things that I did not see because they know what it is. I mean, I look good, but they know what it is to be young. Yes? So I want them to code the data. I want them to generate themes with me. I have some ideas as well. Our line producer, Musila Silebe, had a chat with the two professors and the speaker for more detail. And our reporter, Linda Moharamedi, was also at the workshop. Thank you very much. Uh, with me, I'm having three academics, and uh, we're going to talk about the workshop that we just had and the, the impact of the workshop, what they wanted to achieve from this workshop. Um, uh, I'm having um, Professor Tamani and Professor uh, so, uh, they, they're having two different chairs, so they matched the workshop on those chairs. So let me start with uh, Professor. Yes. So the two chairs uh, came together, and then we decided to organize uh, this uh, beautiful uh, workshop, which was on uh, participatory action research. Uh, and then we decided to invite a uh, scholar from uh, Jamaica, uh, from the University of the West Indies, uh, Dr. Tracy Rogers. And she's the one who facilitated the workshop, uh, which was uh, 
focusing on early career researchers from the University of Nipopo. We really had a very successful uh, workshop and uh, we are quite excited about what the early career researchers have learned in the last two days. Thank you very much uh, from Professor Timani. Uh, well, I don't have much to add, really, to accept that um, you know, when you pull your strengths together, uh, you pull your resources together, uh, and uh, with a scholar from uh, Jamaica, uh, we were maximizing the benefits. So I think we have done so. I like if we had uh, had a one workshop the other day, another workshop the other day on the same kind of stuff. It will be wasteful. Uh, but this time, putting the two cases together, collaborating on this matter with the scholar here from uh, Jamaica, it has been, uh, to me, a very successful uh, endeavor. Thank you very much. And then we'll go to Dr. Rogers. Yes. Uh, what are the things that you think uh, are very important for the participants that uh, who attended the two-day workshop? Yes. So um, thank you so much. I'm very happy to participate in this conversation. I was reflecting with the professors that when I did my PhD, it was a very lonely, isolating experience. In fact, a lot of us came up out of, you know, in universities where the system has proved to us that you deserve to be here. We put obstacles and you jump through all of them. And then if you survive, <laughs> bloody and bruised, we will give you a PhD. The environment at this workshop is the opposite. It is about creating a space so that only career researchers, number one, they can network with each other, um, really engage in community, know that they're not alone. Most importantly, be mentored. So I feel like we're changing the paradigm around how we build scholars. It reminds us that as university, professionals as academics, our job is to be of service, service to our community, service to our students. So this workshop was just very impressive in terms of bringing people together to say, let us build your knowledge, let us build connection, let's, let's talk through some of the problems. You don't have to go and figure things out on your own. And what we do is create an environment that builds strong um, professionals, which is very important for us of the global south, very important for us to decolonize the way in which we approach education and the academy. So it was a very powerful two days. I'm very impressed that these two chairs got together and I'm grateful to be invited to participate and lead this two-day workshop. Thank you very much. I've got a last question. I'm not sure between you two who will answer it, but I want to check something because Schools and mental health, what's the relationship? Well, uh, let me take it. Yeah. Um, in fact, I mean, it's essentially, uh, should we say, two sides of the same coin. Because uh, what we are going to be putting more emphasis on in the next five years, which is the lifespan of the, 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 the research chairs, is that we're going to sort of move more in the direction of mental health in schools because uh, if his chair is on schools as enabling environment and my chair is on uh, mental health so we, we then felt as the two uh, chairs that it would make sense for us to pull our resources together and then focus on issues of mental health in schools which you would know today that it's a very big problem in our society uh, in this country, issues about uh, problems of kids in the schools, uh, and, and so we are, we are trying to just focus on that, and we believe that uh, uh, in the next five years we'll have uh, put in place a few activities and programs that will just precisely do that. So we're really looking forward to that. We're very excited about the prospects as well. Thank you very much. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with more updates. Stay with us.
Thank you for staying with us. The university hosted a mathematical Olympiad, a highly anticipated event that celebrates young mathematical talent. With a display of remarkable problem-solving skills and intellectual prowess from learners across the region. The event, held at Umkhupoti Tirohol, brought together some of the brightest young minds who competed fiercely to showcase their proficiency in mathematical concepts and applications. We are here at the University of Limpopo in Tirohol, where the Miss Olympia event is taking place. With me, I have Mana Resikadi, who is the president of AMESA. Well, I think mathematics is a human activity. It's a thing that we do every day. And um, it is only on the basis of the things that we are experiencing that we are able to look at some patterns and we represent those patterns and we symbolize or we write down in the way that we write in mathematics the things that are happening in life. Mathematics is a human activity. Thank you for joining us, sir. On the alumna front, humanity and business alumna Puti Mutapo is on a quest to redefine public relations in Southern Africa. Her journey in the sector spans over two decades. She has just been elected president of Public Relations Institute of Southern Africa. Puti Mutapo is currently the head of marketing and communication at Capricorn District Municipality. She has studied Bachelors of Arts, Honours, MBA and Senior Management Certificate at the University of Limpopo. She is here in studio to share her journey. Pretty. thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you so much for the invite, Bali. How did your early experiences as an arts student shape your career path in public relations and communication management? Look, um, I did not expect to be where I am today. And I think it was preparing me for a lot of things that were to come. Um, like any other person, you come to a tertiary institution, you learn new things, new experiences, you're far away from parents. It's a new environment altogether. And you get to even experience things that were never even in your mind. And there were a lot of things that had happened. And I think I accidentally uh, became an art student. So I will not say how did it shape. It's something that I did not expect. But I'm happy that I'm here today. So what pivotal moments and experiences led you to pursue a career in media and communication, ultimately culminating in your election as president of PRESA? Look, the first thing, like I said, it was, it was an accident uh, how I got into arts. I remember I attended a wrong class for orientation session. Mm -hmm. And when I got into that class, when I was about to go out, then I had the program director talking about um, the former Chakaranda FM station manager who was about to present. And that caught my, my attention. I sat down. And I listened to that orientation session until he was done. It was the moment that I said, I'm going to join the media studies. And I was part of the first class of media studies. It was led then by uh, the late Dr. Tusaho and also Professor Musi. There's a lot that uh, were new to us and the environment all together, the media studies all together, it was new. And the only thing that was so exciting was the fact that one day I can be on radio. That was the most exciting thing about it. And that's where I saw myself. But, you know, life will teach you lessons that your plans are never your own. Uh, God's plans are the one that will lead you to where you're supposed to be. And from moving around uh, as a student, you know, you get to see people, you understand when you are taught, you start researching, looking at everything that you see in a different eye. And ultimately, that will, will tell you that uh, as you continue, 
you may deviate from a path that you initially thought you were supposed to take. But due to the experiences that you get to understand and things that you get to learn, you move to other directions. And that is how I got to move to the direction I am today. Instead of being in front of the camera, in front of the mic, today I'm behind the mic, and I'm also leading other people within the profession. And I am humbled by that. How did you manage to balance your studies, work and family responsibilities while thriving the personal and professional growth, particularly during your pursuit of an NBA? Look, it's not an easy task to do. And I think, I must just say, there is this thing God has given us as women, or maybe, let me just say as a human being, you, you've got this power to do extraordinary things at the time that you think you want because the timing becomes perfect for you and you may sometimes it's difficult but you don't even understand how you get through it you juggle around the time the work and compromises uh, you can you can make it without compromises you you compromise on your financial uh, status you there are certain things that you need to let go of because you need to invest in your studies there are certain family decisions that you need to make to make sometimes you miss most important moments in your life your first step of your baby because you're attending a class when you come back she's already walking and you feel like even crying but there's nothing you can do you you made a choice and you knew when you made that choice it comes with compromises and there is nothing as fulfilling at the end of the day as realizing that compromises that you have made and the decision that you made worth every cent that you have paid and every moment that you have sacrificed. What are your fond memories of Teflop, being on campus and experiences? <laughs> oh my God, so many memories. Good ones, sad ones, painful ones. You know, the strikes, you'll, you'll always think about that. The moment where you don't even have money to pay for registration fees, you are juggling around, you don't know where to sleep, but you just meet strangers that are able to accommodate you. The warmth in this institution, I, I remember so many beautiful memories and moments where you get to be assisted by strangers. Uh, and so many faces which you even meet today and you just look at the person and say this one is from Teflop, I remember the face we are like just one big family and studying different things but still within the same institution and being one family so I was, I was staying outside campus so one of the things that was very a key was the issue of safety and and I know even today it's still there but I can tell you that we had a safe environment when you go outside you meet people that are strangers some of them will even uh, go with you and make sure that you get to your place and and you are safe at home then they will they will go back that is the environment that was created for years and I hope even today is still the same uh, we 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 had bits and little incidents but you know it's you go up and down you come back from library libraries at night you you cross night you are tired you don't know what you do you sleep in the hall because you don't want to miss a single class and and one of the most painful experience was uh, having to fail the first test in my life happened here at varsity and if I remember that, that moment was very painful and I've never experienced that. It was so painful, I went, I went to the stadium, just sat there by myself and from there until it was late. When it was late, I went outside uh, to my room and I cried that day. I asked myself, why am I here? I had to make a choice. Uh, Am I going to see more of this to come or am I going to pull my socks 
and make sure that there's a change. And I decided to pull my socks and look at things differently, ask questions, talk to people, not act as if I misses know it all, like I'm at the secondary school, because the environment definitely is, is, is a, it's a complete different environment from to what I was experiencing at high school. So you have to lean on other people. You can make it on your own. Prisa will be hosting a roadshow on campus on the 18th of August to enlighten students about industry. Tell us more about it and what it seeks to achieve. Look, um, there are those that came before us and they opened doors. It is our duty as an institution to also open doors for those that are coming after us. And as an, a professional body, we, we have a responsibility also to build the profession of PR and communications. And we can't do it on our own as an institution. We have to do it in partnership with various stakeholders. And here I'm talking about agencies, I'm talking about consultancies, I'm talking about businesses, I'm also talking about academic institutions. And you need to understand that you can't do things on your own. A collaboration is the way to go. Stakeholder engagement is the way to go. And you find that there are opportunities that are out there which students are not even aware of. True. When you are studying in a communication environment, in most cases the only thing that you'll think about is being a journalist, working for a radio station behind the mic or in front of the mic or working for a television, but you don't know the work that gets to be put behind those closed doors, behind the scenes, which are part of communication, reputation, brand management. All of that is part of, of the journey that we want to take students through when we come up with this roadshow. We are saying uh, we afford an opportunity to students to understand that there is more that can be done within the profession than just being on TV and being on radio. And that is the whole purpose of creating this particular platform. And we hope that uh, going forth it's something that will build and it becomes an annual program. And also we hope that uh, going forth it will also assist the institution when it comes to academic um, the curriculum. Uh, we would like to see the profession playing a huge role in terms of assisting in the development and endorsement of the curriculum because there are a lot of changes which academic institutions tend to fall behind. And we think with our involvement, uh, we may be able to uh, redirect that and steer the ship in the, in the direction where in we don't fall behind, the students don't fall behind. We all carry each other and hold hands together and move in the same direction that will develop the industry and those that are going to come after us because we are not going to end here. There are those that need to take over someday. And as I vacate the office one day, I need to look back and say, I have done something to the profession, not only to the members of PRISA, but I've extended that to the future members who are still yet to become members of PRISA. Puti, thank you so much for joining us today in studio. The pleasure is all mine. That was Puti Mutapo sharing with us her experiences. In a radical turn of events, dozens of students from universities across the country are demonstrating on their campuses to protest against the inconsistent and frustrating financial aid systems that have left many of them struggling to make ends meet. At the University of Limpopo, the Student Representative Council organized a trip to the union buildings in Pretoria to voice their grievances over delayed payments from the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and the challenges of migrating to the newly introduced Izaga payment. Now we are joined in studio by SRC Treasurer General Mpo Ramudike to enlighten us about the demonstration to union buildings and the challenges with the Izaga payment system. Mpo, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you for having me. So, can you please provide an overview of the recent protest 
at universities across the country. What specific issues has led to these demonstrations? The recent protests across uh, in universities across South Africa have been caused by NSFAS introducing a new direct payment system that has brought a lot of issues and frustrations within students, such as students being unable to get onboarded on the system, students who are not receiving their full allowances, money disappearing from their accounts, and then being charged ridiculous amounts for transactions. Students who were initially funded are no longer on the funding list, and this is what led to the protest at the union buildings, where SRCs and student, students from various universities met to voice out their frustrations and grievances. Could you explain the role of NFSAs and its significance in supporting students' financial needs? What challenges have students been facing with regards to delayed payments? NSFAS is a funding scheme from the government to support students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and from the working class families. But with the current direct payment system, students are unable to pay rent and to feed themselves. They are expected to attend classes and also to write tests hungry. True. With that being said, the introduction of Izaga payment system has been mentioned as a point of contention. Can you shed light on what this payment system is and why students are finding it so hard, challenging to migrate to it? Izaga is a service provider appointed by NSFAS to directly disperse funds to students from NSFAS instead of going through financial aid offices in their campuses. Students find it hard to migrate to the system because um, NSFAS hasn't sent their details to Izaga and students cannot be onboarded on the system without their database being sent by NSFAS. Oh, okay. Are there any specific demands or resolutions that the protesting students are seeking from the government or the university administrations? Yes, of course. The memorandum of demand we submitted indicated that we want the immediate removal of Izaga and also to reinstate financial aid for disbursement of allowances. Also, students who have approved appeals need to be funded. They need to receive their funding. And also to reinstate students who have been removed from the funding list for no reason. Okay. Can you please describe the atmosphere and events during the trip to the Union buildings in Pretoria? Were there any interactions with the government officials or representative during the protest and supplying of the memorandum of agreement? The mood at the union buildings was that of anger and frustrations. On top of that, we were met with the utmost arrogance where our students were shot at a peaceful march. But, however, we were able to submit the memorandum and we are still awaiting the response. Okay. Have there been any discussions or negotiations between the Student Representative Council and relevant authorities since the protest? And what have been the outcome since this discussion, if there's any? As we speak, we haven't had any discussions or negotiations with the relevant authorities. In this case, it would be DHEAD. But uh, as we have said, the SRC has alluded in their most recent uh, communique, we are still waiting for the response within seven days, but we are going to make sure that we do not rest until our students get what is due to them. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. Thank you for having me. Let's take a short break. When we return from the break, we'll bring you more news and your spot updates. Stay tuned to Inside UL News. Thank you for staying tuned. Our top story in sport today takes us to the heart of competitive volleyball actions as the University of Limpopo, which hosted the Capricorn District Third League Games in a bid to further elevate the sport's popularity and outreach efforts. 
The new cinema hall was transformed into a thrilling battleground as the University of Limpopo volleyball team played a host to the Capricorn District third league games. The event showcased a spectacular display of athleticism and sportsmanship, uniting teams from various backgrounds in the spirit of healthy competition. Our reporter, Leslie Rapiri, filed this report. Thank you very much. Right now we are joined by the University of Limpopo manager in the team of volleyball. Thank you very much, Mathilde, for joining us. Tell us, what is the purpose of this event? Thank you so much. Today, as a University of Limpopo, we are hosting Capricorn Volleyball uh, League Games, which is the third one here, which involves multiple teams around Polokwane. Thank you. And tell us, how, how the University of Limpopo community benefiting from this kind of event? This uh, Capricorn League Games involves multiple teams around Polokwane, even including Butoba and then next neighbor, which is the men's and boy and, and all that. So this includes the high school and the primary school kids, which we gives us an opportunity to go and recruit for them today. Hey, come to the University of Mbopo for your first years as the university students and then join the University of Mbopo Volleyball Club. So you teach them the level of volleyball that happens in the lower level to the high level. So basically what you're saying is that the University of Limpopo is also reaching out to the community. So just give us a little bit of background on that and how the, like, the community in general has to maybe come in and join. So mostly we have some career guidance that only grade 12 that comes to the university and most when they come here it's only about academics. So when we have those small teams that are playing volleyball, remember in South Africa there are those teams that like the clubs, like soccer, netball and all that, those the kids knows about it. So when it comes to volleyball, we are the high community of the uh, mountain and the 12 club as a whole, we also have a volleyball at the University of Limpopo. Please, let's recruit as much as we can so that students, uh, we can have a young player. Uh, learners who can soon be the most great. Who knows how to play football, not only the soccer and rugby. Thank you very much. That was the manager of the University of Limpopo volleyball team. And I'm Leslie Rapini from Inside UL News. Back to you in studio. Well, this brings us to the end of our news bulletins for this week. Thank you for joining us and we will be back next week Friday. Until then, from me, Balikani Kekana, and the rest of Inside UL News team, have a great week ahead.